Hi, this is the most iconic boombox of the 1980s, and I've done a teardown video of this. I'll link it in if you haven't seen it. It's really interesting. And this is a boombox from 2023 that costs 33 US dollars. And we're going to tear it down. Uh, don't blame me, you voted for it. So what do you get with this Bobby Dazzler? You get a cassette deck. You get AM, FM and shortwave radio. You get extra bass because it's a boombox. It's going to be thumping. You get a carry handle. Believe it or not, you actually get USB and SD card interface. Runs from four D cell batteries. It's got a microphone, recording capability, a headphone jack and Bob's your uncle. 33 Yankee bucks. Oh. Did I mention the wood grain finish? Oh. But yeah, you're not gonna get much street cred wandering down the street with one of these bad boys. You're better off with an oscilloscope. Trust me, wander the streets like a boss. And did I mention it's got retro Bluetooth as well? So of course for 33 Yankee bucks, 49 Australian dollars, we do not expect much from this thing. But anyway, it's gonna be interesting to have a look what's inside this thing. Here's the box. We've got uh, Bluetooth, USB, SD, MMC card, AMF, I'm shortwave, I'm surprised, and cassette recorder. I don't know why they bother with the record functionality, but anyway, a Bluetooth interface. So that might be handy as a Bluetooth speaker, a whopping 1.5 watts output for moderate volume. So much for the boom in Boombox, I don't think we're going to get much boom boom, even though we've got extra bass. <gasps> for the sticker aficionados, oh look at that, it's like a bought one. And look at this, it's got soft eject mechanism. Oh, oh look, it's got wanky gold trim. And what the hell is scale here? I mean, seriously, like as if you didn't know, it's a scale. <laughs> On the front here, they've got a microphone. I don't know why you'd bother. And we've got the extra bass wanky sticker here. And what, the three and a half inch, uh, looks like, doesn't look like a very deep throw cone on this thing. And what looks like a, like a two-way tweeter system, but I'm pretty sure it's not. I think it's going to be a full range uh, jobby. And then, as I said, yeah, we've got the soft opening mechanism, but there's nothing fancy in that. Um, and AM, FM, I was surprised by the shortwave. I don't know, like, I don't know why they bothered these days. It's got APSS, does that have a music search system? We'll try it out. So anyway, it's available in any colour you like, as long as it's black, I guess. Um, and which, sorry, go totally goose up my uh, camera exposure. Uh, three and a half mil uh, headphone jack here. There's no external line in uh, function at all. And the brand is uh, Anko, but I'm sure it goes under a million different brands. The local coal supermarket uh, here, they actually currently selling it for 69 Australian dollars. And it's under some other uh, brand. And I'll put it up. But it all comes out of the one factory in China. So uh, 220, 240 volt AC input. So it's not a universal input. So it looks like it's only for uh, like, you know, specific market. They might uh, re-transform it, tap it uh, for different markets. But uh, DC 6 volts are four D size batteries. It's a wireless boombox speaker or ghetto blaster, if you will. Leave it in the comments. Were you ghetto blaster or were you boombox in the 80s? Here in Australia, and they were generally called ghetto blasters. But I suspect you're not going to be do, doing much blasting in the ghetto with this thing. And QC pass sticker, of course, absolute finest quality here. And actually, what's, what's over there? There's your switch for your 110 to 220. They didn't bother with rubber feet because that costs extra, of course, but I'm actually uh, rather surprised at the, uh, I'm not going to say it's quality, but like for 33 bucks? Eh, it's fine. But the best part about this, undoubtedly, is the wood grain finish. Look at this. <laughs> Straight out of the 1970s. They didn't even bother. This is not 1980s. Uh, this is 1970s stuff. But uh, these feel like, I like the rocker switches here. We've got tape, uh, MP3 and uh, radio. It looks like there is no on-off switch, just like regular boom boxes from the 80s, as you've seen uh, in the uh, teardown I've done before. But these are a bit spongy, but you know, what do you expect? So if you leave it on tape, it should be off. We can actually measure the consumption of that. And if you press uh, 
play, that would actually um, switch on the power because there's no power switch on this. But yeah, USB interface, memory stick, there's a LED here and um, just there's no LCD at all. So you don't know like what track you're playing or whatever. You just go next and that's it. And for you graphic equalizer aficionados, sorry, you've only got your treble, bass and your volume. Uh, these feel like actual pots. Um, I don't think they're digital encoder, but we'll uh, find out. And then of course we have our telescopic rod antenna there. So I like, I'm actually surprised. This thing's actually, it's like for the price, it doesn't look and feel too bad at all, actually. I mean, I'm not going to be overly harsh on this thing. For the price bracket, we're just curious to see what's inside. And does it sound any good? But you know what we say here on the EV blog don't turn it on, take it apart. And you can see the overexposure on the camera there, it's all black. Ugh. Right, so it's going to be interesting to see how they've got this price down because it really is quite remarkable that you can sell this in a major department store here in Australia for 49 Aussie bucks or 33 US dollars. So taking out five, uh, no, six screws here and well, there you go. We do have a transformer. We've got the tape mechanism that apparently a lot of people left it in the comments on Twitter that there's only one Chinese maker of tape mechanisms these days. And well, that's it. Um, very quite 1980s point to point wiring for a bit of stuff here. That's interesting. So it looks like we have three main boards is probably it. We've got our SD card uh, board over here, which is basically just going to, that's just going to be completely standalone, probably just getting audio directly uh, out of that. But I do kind of get sort of, you know, 80s boombox vibes from the discrete uh, wiring. And there's our uh, antenna rod. There's a bit of hot snot action going on there and a bit of hot, hot snot uh, string. And they've even gone to the effort to like tape over some wires here. So that's all right. And there's our uh, mains transformer down there. Where's the switch? Yeah, they haven't done that. They haven't implemented that. So the sticker is correct. It is uh, uh, wired for 240 volt only. But when they designed the plastics on it, they were obviously thinking that, uh, no, yeah, we'll make it multi uh, voltage. But in the end, they went, yeah, no, nah, we'll save a couple of cents. Um, and we'll just whack in a different uh, transformer for the different markets there. <laughs> and it's all oh, hot snot here. Um, what's going on here? And is that a micro switch so when you plug in the mains connector because this is not mains here this is your mains um output here which goes straight into your transformer yeah check it out there's a switch down in there that pushes down so when you plug in uh the figure eight mains uh, flex there it disconnects the battery nice and the speaker down in here as i said that's not exactly a deep throw uh woofer there so <laughs> yeah but it is uh four ohms eight marked eight watts it's dumb. yeah it's got an eight watt speaker so even though they've got plus in the box 1.5 watts i guess uh there's probably not going to be much of a power amp on your board over here i suspect but well, the, the speakers are overrated. I'm actually surprised. But yeah, no surprise for finding that there is no tweeter in there. Of course, that just uh, that thing on the front is uh, fake and which was actually common in the 1980s. You'd have fake uh, tweeters. They'd even put a little piezo diaphragm in there because they didn't cost anything and they just wouldn't hook it up. But I did not expect <laughs> a dual-way speaker system or ported enclosures or anything like that but so two full range uh speakers i assume is it st is it actually stereo or is it <laughs> is it mono <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me yeah i'm right look this red wire here goes across here and over to the other speaker over here. Sorry, you can't see it well. The speakers are actually in series. So you've got one big 8 ohm speaker. This sucker ain't stereo. It's mono. But I know it's 33 bucks. And you can see that over here. They're just soldered on the back and there's only one speaker terminal there. So <laughs> there you go. And that's the uh, headphone uh, output. Uh, socket there so they just switch it uh, directly you either switch it through to your headphones the same amplifier for the headphones and for the speakers on this thing oh it's not going to sound great and a big difference from the 1980s is you don't get any MELF resistors you know I'm a MELF fanboy I like my MELFs got some uh, yeah a bunch of surface mount uh, what's that chippy down there I can have a look that'd be the tuner would it yes it would because I can see the rod antenna 
down in there and the fine wires coming up and they're soldered onto there. So that's got to be one of these all-in-one jobbies. And yeah, that's a BK1198 uh, 3-in-1 uh, AM FM shortwave uh, receiver chip in there. And it's just mounted on the bottom. And is this going to be a single-sided PCB? Like, where's the, where's the rest of it? Where's Wally? I'm actually reasonably impressed. Somebody went to the effort to lock tight these screws down to the PCB and they've done it over on this one as well. They've even put some like tape here just to cable manage uh, the wires and stuff. So believe it or not they do actually care about the assembly of this thing. Sure it's built down to a price but hey I'm, <laughs> I'm actually not complaining. And check it out here's the wire going over to the tape head over there um, and th that's all she wrote. Where's the it's supposed to have a microphone doesn't it? Where's the erase head? It's all in one is it? So there's our single-sided audio board. Um, it's just got the buttons. So yeah, they're obviously shaving sense off here. So these are all going to be single-sided. And that's for our audio uh, controls there. So uh, that's like, there's no active stuff on there. There's a few passives. And I got those knobs off the top and check it out. They have like a bit of paper stuffed in there to make them fit because uh, they're a little bit how you're doing. So yeah, okay. <laughs> Whatever worked. So there's our tone board, single-sided, uh, as you'll note, and they got 300k pots on there, which has an in, ground, and an out. It's a little bit how you're doing, just no active network there, but eh, what, what do you want? It's mono anyway. And I honestly don't know why they bothered with the microphone there. Like, nobody cares? Like, and does it record to the tape, or does it record to the SD card? Because I'm not sure if there's a way to actually switch between that. But anyway, you can get a, uh, for your speaker aficionados, you can get a full glory shot of that. There you go. Um, yeah, it's not going to win any prizes. And they've gone to the effort to actually hot snot that in as well, not just to hold it in with those brackets. So they they really care about this thing, like, not rattle into pieces. And yep, I absolutely called that um, single-sided. Yeah, there's no extra circuitry there for the tape. There's no active circuitry there at all. What's going on? And there's a switch that actually hooks up to the tape deck, which, um, it, like, switches that on or whatever, but, like, we've got some... We've got some caps over here, and here's your rocker switch interface. I rather like that. They've gone to a bit of effort. And the um and the tuning dial here. Look at this. Rather than your tr traditional cord, this is great. They've got this, which uh, translates into a pot. That that pot there down on the board. And then they've got another cog up here, which then that goes up to a the a ratchet like cog along there like that. Oh, now I've goofed it. I've got to get the position right. And then that's what moves the uh, the dial on the front. <laughs> Isn't that something? Hands up. Leave it in the comments if you ever saw that in like a 1980s boombox. Can't say I have. And there's our single chip uh, power amplifier in uh, quote marks. Um, and that must be handling um, also the input uh, from the tape deck. So they must just be like switching that straight from the head with a little bit of filtering and bias and whatnot um, straight through to the amplifier chip. So that's how they've got their price down in this, like all single-sided boards, and they've saved every cent they can on uh, semiconductors, uh, of course, like, you know, active stuff. All your passives are uh, dirt cheap, and, you know, the rest of the money just goes into the plastics and the, the tape mechanism and, and the mechanicals uh, of that and whatnot. But, um, yeah, it's actually slightly better than I expected, maybe, apart from the, like, I didn't expect stereo, but, you know, it would have been nice. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. I just noticed two transistors here, Q1 and Q2 there. There you go. So, yeah, it does have a little bit of maybe <laughs> some discrete uh, transistor amplification, but that's all she wrote on the tape mechanism. And, of course, it's only got uh, the just the one signal for the head, so obviously it's a mono head. Uh, like, unbelievable. And given that there's no additional um, active uh, drive output there to uh, do the erase head for this thing, so it has recording capability, so you've got to have an erase head on there, um, it's probably doing that with a uh, permanent magnet. We'll have to have a closer look at the front of the tape.
There you go, I've got the tape mechanism out, and this is apparently a uh, Tanishin TS-21 uh, mechanism. And, yeah, apparently they don't make it anymore, so there's, like, uh, like Chinese clone makers of it, but it's all based on that, and it dates back uh, to the 80s. It's got uh, HS-1 there, whatever that means for those playing along at home, and our tape head here. So you can see there, that is mono. Otherwise, you'd have, like, a split top and bottom there, but nope, it's just... Just the one unfortunately and yep there is your erase head so that that will flip up like that when you press uh, record on this thing and that is a that's just a permanent magnet so it's not actually uh, driven so that's pretty how you do and that's like the cheapest uh, bare bones minimum that you can do eh, but you know that's what you expect for the price is the drive motor there for those playing long home it's getting a bit ugly now there's just wires Flapping around in the breeze here, going everywhere, and I don't want to have to uh, desolder everything. But there's the there's the back side of it. The little contact switch down there, and that's the motor drive. There you go. So yeah, that's going over to your motor over here, and through that little <laughs> micro open air micro switch there. But it is what it is, and this apparently is the tape mechanism used in practically if you buy any modern machine. That doesn't matter what type it is, um, it'll have one of these uh, Tanishin uh, TN21 or and or clone um, units. So yeah, apparently they're not that great, but yeah, you know, at least they play, I guess. Well, let's see what this bad boy sounds like, shall we? So as I suspected, tape, but if we switch that over to MP3, yep, the lead comes. Bluetooth mode. Bluetooth mode, it speaks to me. Bluetooth mode. <laughs> what accent is that? Well, it works. None of that fine tuning rubbish. There you go, it does actually work. Treble, bass. Uh, but I know what you're all thinking. Dave, can it play Smash Hits 87? Well, <laughs> there's only one way to find out. Uh, yeah, it's got to go up, so. Did I do countdown? Da, 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 woo. Gotta tell you, that sounds pretty awful. Well, I'm rewinding, it doesn't seem to stop at a song, so I don't know what that so it doesn't have a music search thing. Yeah. Kylie Minogue. Not sure if you can hear that, but the low level hiss on this thing is just awful. No. No. Man, it works. Compare it. Way better. <laughs> Stereo! And there you go, MP3 um, from the USB stick. I'm giving that the best chance possible. Barely up. Drop count B more than a year before Mosaic. No, now shout, now shout it from the balcony. And I got my shoe phone and it says connected. And here we go. The big gaudy ones with the massive speakers. Anyway, the that sounds all right. The big 7600. And the reason this is iconic is because this right. is the one that John... So yeah, the Bluetooth mode works on it and it sounds like it's it's passable for speech. It's not as good as <laughs> anything else I've got. Yeah, I just don't get the market for this thing at all. If you want something with a any t sort of decent tape deck, just go and buy a secondhand unit from the 80s, the 90s, even into the uh, 2000s. And it's going to support chrome metal uh, tapes. It's going to be full stereo. It's going to have proper preamps and amplifiers and maybe even line out and everything. And if you want to uh, do a Bluetooth um, here, then, well, there's much better capable Bluetooth uh, units and once again it's mono and it just it sounds like garbage in the amplifier they've penny pinched on absolutely everything but as I said I'm amazed at what you get for the price I'm amazed that they can build this for the price but I just don't understand the market for it really no it is jack of all trades masters of none anyway if you like that video please give it a big thumbs up and as always discuss down below catch you next time